Kundalini. An Occult Experience by George Sidney Ariadale. Chapter 2 The Universe Kundalini and Centers. The last sentence in the foregoing chapter brings us at once to the startling opening which heralded these various experiences and experiments. In the first flash of intuitional and possibly higher expansion, the subject of the experiences became engulfed in a sense of the relationship between the microcosm and the macrocosm. He is, for the time, carried off his feet. His consciousness flashes outwards to what seems to be the furthest confines of space and he becomes absorbed in the glorious and perfect certainty-giving fact of the intimate unity of his own consciousness, not only with the universal consciousness, insofar as the word universal may at all be rightly used when there seems to be a universal beyond the infinite but also with specific parts of the universal consciousness. His own individual consciousness is a piece of mosaic in the pattern of evolving life, and there are other pieces seemingly closely linked to his as being of the same general rate of vibration, of the same color. Where are their mosaics similar in general principle to his? And at once, as in response, vibrations seem to come from afar and from a very precise afar not here to be more defined. There is clearly an immense cosmic significance of the twin soul theory, might I not say the multiple soul theory, by no means within the compass of this tiny little world of ours. And let it be said at once that the commonplace twin soul idea current in certain phases of modern thought is a very poor caricature of a marvelous reality. This very earth has its twin star, and it becomes clear at once that the duality of life is no less fundamental than its unity, or than its trinity but further speculation is denied. It will not be profitable at this stage. In the light of this special intuition the speculation also arises, as the student is carried still further off his feet, though not so wildly that there is no substance in his shadows as to the relation between the great occult rites of the fire on this earth, and the universe kundalini of which our Lord the Son is the heart as well as the body. For us, the Son is kundalini in excelsis, in which we live and move and have our being. Each individual kundalini in whatever kingdom of nature, in whatever substance great or small in whatever world, is part of the Sun Kundalini. And, strange as it may seem, these tiny Kundalini streams partake of the omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, of their sublime progenitor. Thus may we say that all life, each one of us, is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, in the becoming. There is a most intimate connection between the fire of our Lord the Son and the universe life which He has set afire. It becomes clear at once that Kundalini, howsoever it may appear, is mighty and torrential here mighty and torrential in potentiality only, their stirring and awakening, elsewhere in resistless movement, burning all before it. Is there a kundalini chain linking the constituent elements of our own solar system, 
and another chain linking the various solar systems. Surely so, and speculation is no less interesting as to the nature of the centers of a solar system and on their vivificatio by cosmic kundalini. The Earth has its centers whirling wheels of fiery energy and it would appear that one of the functions of some of the lords of evolution is the regulation of distribution and intensity of kundalini. This is a reason why even their work has been described as hazardous, like the work of those who bring ammunition to the front line trenches in time of war. They might in some way, perhaps, be consumed with the very force they wield, though it may be supposed that in their case this could not happen. As a preliminary to the deeper understanding of this tremendous vista, it would be necessary to learn how Kundalini is aroused and directed to the various centers of the vehicles of a human being not merely for a general vivificatio of their life, but also, as may be required, for their individual vivificatio to certain definite ends. For example, a lecture has to be delivered, an audience or congregation has to be influenced. Watching the process at work it seemed as if it automatically begins by the general stimulation of Kundalini along, and up and down, the spine, so that there comes about a distinct glow. This happens to a microscopic extent with all who lecture, or who, in one or another of a number of ways, seek to influence for good their fellow men. But where there is training the glow expands into a fire. And further results can be obtained if special vivificatio takes place in the heart, throat and along the line between the middle of the head and the center of the eyebrows. This vivificatio proceeds through the solar plexus a fact which partly accounts for the feeling of sickness some people experience before lecturing or before some other unusual strain, together with other physical symptoms. In special cases, such feelings always occur, marking the purification of the vehicles in order to facilitate the downpouring of higher and also of superhuman, Kundalini. This does not mean that in most of these people Kundalini is actually aroused, but that there is in them a concentration, an intensification, of the universal Kundalini fire, with the result that their nerves and other channels have more to carry than the fire load to which they are normally accustomed. However localized Kundalini may be from one point of view, from another it is universal omnipresent. In some cases, however, the concentration of the fire is predominantly local. It is a case of spontaneous combustion, but the same effects are noticeable. It is clear that nicotine and alcohol definitely act in some way upon Kundalini, the former interposing a barrier between the general force of Kundalini and its operation in the various vehicles of the individual concerned, while the other seems to act as a direct stimulant, stirring the force in wrong directions or in some way wrongly intensifying it, and in any case doing these things in connection with an individual far from ready for fire development. All narcotics, drugs, stimulants, 
clog the system and interpose a deadening miasma between the individual and all larger consciousness. But to return to the stimulation of Kundalini for special purposes, the spinal glow seems to be the first phenomenon, and this is intensified by external conditions as, for example, presence in an already magnetized area, a church, a temple or by the influence of music, chanting, participation in ceremony or service, and so forth. In addition to the stimulation of the spinal glow there is also an awakening, a glowing, as it were, of the heart, throat and middle head centers sometimes all together, sometimes one and not the rest, according to temperament. This stimulation often has a definite physical counterpart in the disturbance of organic functioning. The vivificatio of the heart center seems to be how otherwise to express it. That of a cold glow. The juxtaposition of the two words sounds absurd. And yet I do not think the facts have been misinterpreted. As regards the throat, the vivificatio, noticed on a particular occasion, seemed to express itself physically as a kind of momentary constriction which was attributed to repercussions from the breaking down of barriers between the non-physical and the physical, so as to enable Kundalini to vivify the actual vibrations issuing from the throat as, for example, when a lecture is delivered. The result is an address potent apart altogether from any eloquence and affecting in different ways people in the audience who are at different levels of evolution. They become bathed in Kundalini, the result in individual cases depending upon individual receptivity. It becomes apparent that Kundalini may well be compared with electricity as to the uses to which it can be put. Continuous consciousness, remembrance of events during the night, and so on, are only certain fruits of the arousing of Kundalini. Even more important is the directly added power it gives for work in the outer world. It is both another sense and a very powerful stimulation of existing senses as well as of all other forces the individual already wields. We are only at the beginning of discoveries regarding Kundalini, for the interesting effects observed are but the results of the earliest stages of its awakening, of the breaking down of preliminary barriers. Mercifully, the world is preserved from the discovery by science of the Kundalini ray, or annihilation would ensue. When we read of the so-called death rays and other highly destructive emanations from great centers of force, we may think of Kundalini as more powerful than all of them put together and we shall be glad to leave it alone until it is necessary that we should learn to use it. It turns in boomerang fashion with terrible effect upon those who misuse it, upon those who do not reverence it, upon those who use it to selfish ends. This audio file was created by Peo Preta Basic. You can download it at payoprita.com.